What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about retaining walls in Revit. I'm going to be showing you how to set up a retaining wall, uh, how to place it, how to add foundation for the retaining wall, and then probably most importantly how to adjust topography uh, to that uh, particular retaining wall so it kind of fits into, well, uh, exactly how that would look like in real uh, life. I think that's the most important part. Uh, now in the first half of this video I'm I'm just going to be showing you kind of the regular Revit workflow and then in the second half I'm going to be showing you uh, a workflow by using the uh, environment uh, plugin. Uh, this is just going to give us some additional tools that are going to well allow us to do this on uh, I guess more complicated uh, retaining wall situations and uh, terrains. Uh, now, if you want to learn more about uh, site design and coordination in Revit, well, I have a course on that topic. So on my website, BalkanArctic.com, I'm going to link it up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. Uh, there I have many different courses and one of those courses is site design and coordination in Revit, where I show you pretty much everything you need to know when it comes to, well, site design and coordination inside of Revit. Uh, now that course has seven chapters. The first five chapters cover pretty much everything you need to know about all of the tools, the workflows and everything. And then the uh, last two chapters are on the environment plugin. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you already know about the environment plugin. Uh, it's just a really cool plugin that gives you all of these extra tools that Revit unfortunately doesn't have that you, well, that you really need when it comes to uh, modeling your site. Uh, so uh, in this video, and as I said, in the second half, I'm just going to be showing you how to to implement those tools. Uh, now, if you want to check out the plugin, I'm going to include the link in the description of this video and then also up in the cards above. And if you get my course, you will get an extended uh, trial, uh, so extra th three months of trial uh, for this uh, plugin. And if you want to purchase it, uh, you can use the coupon code Balkan Architect to get additional 55 days on your subscription. So I think that's a really good deal. Okay, anyways, now let's get started. So let's jump into Revit. And as you can see, here I am uh, in Revit, just at my home screen. So I'm just going to start a new project. And then for the template file, I'm going to choose my architecture design template. Now, if you want to check out my templates, you can find them on my website as well. So I'm, I'll leave a link up there in the cards above. Anyways, now let's click OK and let's let Revit start up. So as soon as Revit starts up, here we go. Uh, let's just go into level one, for for example. And first, what I like to do is I like to set up the site. So let's just model the site that we want to use. So actually, let's go into site plan. So I don't need these two tabs. Uh, then I'm going to go to massing and site, and then I'm going to go to topo surface, and let's place some points. So here I'm just going to set the elevation to zero, and the absolute uh, it's going to be set to absolute elevation and now let's place a few points so I'm just going to be placing a few so let's go with I don't know four or five points yeah I think this is good enough perhaps we can bring this in a little bit there we go okay so once we have our points I'm just going to select this whole thing go to copy and then I'm just going to check multiple and then I'm just going to multiply or copy it uh, a few more times, just like so. Hit the escape key a couple of times. So I'm just going to select these points and bring them up to 300 centimeters. These points bring them up to 600 centimeters. And then these points bring them up to 900 centimeters. OK, so here we have some sort of a site that we're going to be using. And then just to make this a little bit uh, more interesting for the retaining wall, let's say we want to have a road that that's on this side. So the road is obviously horizontal. So we have to dig it in uh, the kind of the, the sloped site. So when we dig it in, we need a retaining wall to keep that earth from kind of falling on your road, obviously. So let's just add that road as well now. So I'm just going to come in here and then go to architecture. Let's go to floor and let's just use a rectangle. So I think it should be somewhere like this, perhaps. Yeah. So let's make it a six meter, 600 centimeter road, just like that. Hit the escape key a few times and then let's go to the 3D view. So let's hit finish. 
Okay, so it's on the bottom. So I'm just going to change this into, uh, let's go with concrete and then bring it up to level two. Okay, and uh, now it's time to create the wall itself. So for the wall, uh, let's go here to the site plan and let's turn on uh, wireframe for a second so we can see the entire road. And now let's go to the wall tool. And here I have many different walls. So I'm just going to go with the exterior wall and then I'm just going to make some changes. So let's go into edit type. Here I'm just going to duplicate this type and let's call this one the uh, retaining wall. Okay. Uh, and then for the retaining wall, for the structure, I'm just going to get rid of the finish layer and make the thickness, well, let's go with 40 centimeters, click OK. And then also really important for the function, you want to change that from exterior to retaining. OK, click OK again, perfect. And now we can place the wall. So I want my wall to go from level two and then it can go up for now let's leave it at 200 centimeters and then we'll see what that looks like. Uh, now for the location line, I'm just going to pick finish face uh, interior. Okay, and then use pick lines and then pick this side. Now, if it goes to the inside, you just wanna come to that line from the outside, see how we get that dashed line on the outside. And then once we click, that wall will be on the outside. If we go to the 3D view, this is what that looks like. Okay, I was hoping that it was on level one, so I don't know why was it here. Okay, anyways, here we have fixed it. Then we can extend it just a little bit below to have that kind of, kind of foundation. Uh, this, this can be fine, you can bring it down a little bit if you want, so it's more in line with the topography. But anyways, there we go, we have that uh, retaining wall in place. Uh, also at this point, I think it's good to add the foundation. So we just wanna add wall foundation. So go here to structure, go to wall, and then here one of the options is retaining footing. So you just wanna select that, select the wall here, and then it's going to place that retaining footing on the bottom of the wall. Perfect. Okay, uh, now for the most important part of this video, and that is how to adjust topography to your wall. Uh, well, what you want to do here is you want to select that topography. You want to go into edit surface, go to the site plan. And then here, what I like to do first is uh, because when I adjust topography here, it can mess up this kind of position of the road here. So for example, uh, this road, it's at level two, right? So that's 360 centimeters. So if I were to just go and place some points, so let's place points at exactly that elevation, 360 and let's place them here. So if I were to do that, so let's place a few of them. See, that would, f first it would bring the wall down here, but then also it will leave this bigger gap in between the road and, uh, uh, and, uh, and the site. So I don't want neither of those things. So I don't want, I want the, the, the site to go up to the wall, not go down like this. And then I don't want this gap here. So in order to, well, not get that, what you want to do is let's just delete these points. There we go. Okay, so you want to go first into the site plan and then you want to place some points here that correspond uh, to the road. So for example, this road, as we said, it's at 360, so we can place some points at 350. So I can go here to place points, go to 350, and then just place it on this edge of the road here. So you can just come in like that, and you can only place them where you have these additional points. So these points here, this one I don't need, I think. There we go. So now first we have that where it goes actually up to the road itself. So that's good, I want that. And then on the other side, uh, what you can do is you can uh, place two sets of points. So one set of points on this side and then one set of points on uh, the other side and then have just a very steep slope inside of that wall line. That's one option. Now, however, there is a better option that I've learned from the Revit kit uh, and it's a really a cool solution. So let me show you what that looks like. So you just wanna select the site. Uh, you wanna go here to mask and site and then you wanna go to split surface. Go back to the site plan, select that surface, and then you just wanna split it through that wall. So just go through the mid kind of center line of the wall. You can go a little bit past the, the site, just like that, hit finish. 
and now you have two sets of topography. You have this topography here, and then you have this topography here. Now it's really easy because you can select the bottom topography, go into Edit Surface, you can just make a broad selection of all of these points that Revit is going to place along that split line, and then you just add the elevation you want, which is in this case 350, click, and you're done. And I think this is a really cool solution. And there we go. So now we have our retaining wall in Revit. We can bring this to be kind of realistic. I think this looks really, really good. And then one just kind of extra trick is turn on the section box. So when you have a section box turned on, uh, and then in this case it's hidden. So when you use a section box on topography, it's going to get that nice edge. So it's going to look like it's 3D topography which I think looks much better, see? So when we apply the section box, it's going to look much, much better. So there we go. Uh, anyways, so this is how you use a retaining wall. Uh, now I'm just going to be showing you how to use the uh, environment tab to create more complicated retaining walls. Okay, so this is the model that I'm going to be using for this demonstration. If I orbit around, you will see that here we basically have like a road that kind of goes around a, a hill or a mountain. Uh, and then obviously it's kind of uh, dug in to the mountain uh, a little bit. So we have this vertical surface of earth and we want to protect this road with a retaining wall so the earth or rocks don't fall on the road itself. Okay, so for something like this, if we were using just the regular Revit approach, it would take forever because uh, then you would have to kind of adjust and readjust and, and uh, split the wall into multiple segments and then uh, play around with it. So it would basically take forever. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to be using the environment uh, tab and I'm going to be using the arrange walls tool. Uh, now before I do that, uh, let's first go to the site plan and let's place some walls. Now I have already placed a detail line as you can see here. So that will just allow me to go to the wall tool, uh, pick out, uh, let's go with the 300 millimeter generic wall and then just use pick lines. Pick the first line, hit the tab key, select the whole chain and there we go. So we have all of these now. Uh, so uh, what you want to do next is you just want to hover over one of the walls, hit the tab key to select the whole chain, and then let's go to the environment tab and go to arrange walls. So here on the arrange walls, uh, you will have the ability to set up the minimum height, the embedment, so how deep it goes for the foundation. And then also here we have the step offset, so basically how much you uh, offset in between different wall segments. Now obviously this should be broken into multiple wall segments. Usually you would do this as some sort of a prefabricated set of walls. So you want to break it into smaller segments and then uh, the arrange walls will just arrange how tall those wall segments will be. So here I'm just going to set the minimum height to one meter and then also the embedment to 1.2 meters and then the step offset we can just leave that at uh, 20. Moving forward here we have the distance to reference so that's set to 1 meter so that's basically how far off is the reference from the wall itself. Now here you can see it's actually very close so we can just go with 1 meter uh, and then also here we have the option to uh, specify the reference surface so in this case it's just topography but you might have some floors or roofs or stairs around so in that case you would just want to uncheck those and use the topography or topo surface only. In this case, we only have the topo surface, so we can theoretically have it checked on, but that's basically what you would do if you just want to use the topo surface, but you have a lot of additional elements that you don't want to use as reference. So now I would simply just click OK, and then it's going to do its calculations, and what you'll see is that really quickly it's going to set up that wall, and as you can see, it, it has been broken down into smaller segments, so we can use this for some sort of a prefabricated uh, set of wall elements, and then we can just uh, use all of the dimensions that we have here. You will see also at the bottom it has been adjusted to follow that 
at least 1.2 meter depth and then the same thing goes on top so this as you can imagine would take forever for me to go and adjust each of these wall segments individually but here it's just a couple of clicks and you're done uh, now in some cases you might have to change the design so let's say I got in contact with the prefabricated uh, concrete factory and they told me well I've seen the project perhaps it should be a little bit deeper in the ground I don't know doesn't look safe so I would then kind of go okay you're right probably or I would talk to my structural engineer and he would tell me that so in that case you have this stretch walls option so basically again I can just make a whole chain selection go to stretch walls and now I can just give it a top and base offset so I can say okay I want it 0.2 meters up and then here I want a 0.3 meter offset on the bottom and then I would just click OK and as you can see everything is just going to ad adjust automatically. All of these segments are going to adjust automatically which is really cool. So there you go, that's how you can create these retaining walls. Now another tool that I want to show you is the approximate wall path. Now this is really cool. So let's say that we have an arc wall. So let's go to the wall tool and then let's use an arc so perhaps something like this and then for walls usually you wouldn't see an actual arc usually it would be broken down into uh, straight wall segments and then it would have multiple straight wall segments like we do over here in this case I could have used this uh, I could have used this tool the approximate wall path but unfortunately this isn't like a perfect uh, arc so I, I couldn't use it there but anyways let me show you how this works so you just select the wall you go to approximate wall path and then here you just adjust the length of segments so if I say I want three meter segments and then I can just allow them to be joined together and if I hit apply as you can see it's just going to break it down into multiple wall segments uh, that I uh, have the uh, approximation segment of three meters. Now you can also disallow the joins and then you can add spacing. So for example, I can add a point, oops, 0 0.2 meters and then hit apply. So it's just going to add that 20 centimeter gap in between these. Now that's cool. Now what's even cooler is that you can even add a rotation angle. So what the rotation angle allows you to do, and let me go here and set this to 20, it basically rotates all of the wall segments. Now if you rotate them like this, you can see we have gaps in between them, but if I change the spacing to something like minus 0.5, so it's just going to extend the walls by half a meter, okay. Perfect. And now, as you can see, we no longer have gaps in between these walls. So this can be used like a sound barrier, but let's say it's in a forest. So you do want to have animals to have the ability to go kind of in between these wall segments, but it's still a good uh, wall uh, sound barrier wall. So I think it's a it's a really cool command that gives you a lot of versatility. So anyways, once you're done, you just hit finish and yeah, you're, you're complete. Uh, the, the wall is complete. And here we have the, the arranged walls wall. So there you go. I, I think these tools are really great when you, uh, when you have kind of complicated terrain, complicated situations, they give you the ability to kind of automate a lot of these processes so you don't have to do everything kind of manually, step by step. Okay, anyways, if you want to get access to all of my Revit project files, you can find those on my Patreon page. It's going to be one of the links in the description below this video and then also up in the cards above. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.